In the problems below, determine if the given values are from a discrete or continuous data set. In order to work out this problem, we have to know the difference between discrete data sets and continuous data sets. So what makes a number discrete or a set of numbers discrete? What makes a set of numbers continuous? Well, a set of discrete numbers, by definition, have gaps between them. So, for example, if you said to someone, I'm going to bring one book to class today. You could also say, I'm going to bring two books to class today. But you would notice that you can't say you're going to bring anything in between those two numbers. You can't say, for example, you're going to bring 1.8 books to class today, right? So when a number is discrete, you can't get values in between two values that are obtainable. So you can say you're going to get bring one book to school. You can say you're going to bring two books to school. But because that data set is discrete, you can't get something like 1.8 or 1.7 or 1.6. Those numbers are not available, not allowed. In a continuous data set, you don't have that problem. Between any two numbers that are in the data set, you can get any other number in between them. For example, I could have um, a bag of rocks that weighs one pound. I could have a bag of rocks that weighs two pounds, but I could have a bag of rocks that weighs 1.8 pounds, 1.87 pounds, 1.888 pounds. As long as my scale is sensitive enough to record it, it makes no, there's no problem, there's no uh, discrepancy or inconsistency with saying the bag of rocks weighs, you know, 1.8863 pounds. That's completely possible. That's the mark of a continuous data set. All right, let's think of an easier way to think of it, though. Because for a lot of people, that kind of logic or reasoning is difficult. If it works for you, that's great. That's the definition of a discrete versus continuous data set. However, if you want to look at another way to think of it, just think of discrete data sets um, involving measurements that came from counts. That means you had to count how many things there were to come up with the answer. So for example, if I said how many books you're going to bring to school today, you would count. I'm going to bring one, two, three books to school, right? If you wanted to figure out how many tickets you received last year while parking at the campus parking lot, you would say I received one ticket, two tickets, or three tickets, right? Or no tickets. For continuous data, you have to make a measurement to get the data typically. So, for example, if I want to know how heavy something is, I put it on a scale and the scale measures the weight. If I want to know how long something took, I'll time it with a stopwatch. If I want to know how far something is, I measure it with um, you know, some kind of a measurement device like a, um, a ruler or a yardstick or something like that, right? So the fact is, is that discrete data is easy to remember as account data, and continuous data usually is measurement data. So when we read this first example, let's try to figure out what kind of data is involved. It says the amount, amounts of times customers are forced to wait in line at local public supermarkets. Well, the amount of time, I would think we would use a stopwatch to measure that. You know, you would click the stopwatch to start the time, then click it to end it, and we could get any fraction of a second there, right? You could say this person waited two minutes, 37 seconds and two ten thousandths of a second. So I'm going to say that this data set is continuous. When I read this one, it says the number of calculators sold by the bookstore each week. But wouldn't we count the number of calculators? I think we would, right? We would count it up. We'd say, you know, there's one calculator sold, two calculators, three or four calculators, right? And we'd have to count how many calculators were sold. So that's going to be discrete data. The number of cousins each FIU student has that attends university somewhere in Florida. Well, the number of cousins you have um, would certainly be a count. You wouldn't measure how many cousins. You know, you don't put them on a scale or something. So you'd count how many cousins you have. So I'm going to say that's discrete data. Length of the commute to campus for each student who lives off campus. Well, the length of commute, again, would be measured some kind of a distance, maybe in miles and, in, in, uh, you know, yards, whatever, right? The point is, though, that length of the commute if you're not measuring it in distance, you can measure it in time, how long it took, but either way, those are measurements, and I would say that data would be continuous because you could live you know, 2.3 miles from campus or 2.31 miles from campus. Any uh, decimal or fraction is possible. The heights of buildings in downtown Fort Lauderdale. Again, to measure a height of a building, you take a measurement of some sort, right? And so you don't count how tall the building is, you take a measurement of how tall it is. So I'm gonna say that data is also continuous. The ounces of beer consumed by college freshmen. 
Sometimes people mess this one up because they might think of whole ounces, you know, if one ounce is two ounces or three ounces, but there's no reason why we wouldn't be able to have, for example, 1.24 ounces, right? We have a very sensitive beaker to measure the amount of alcohol that's being consumed. So I think this is also measurement and it would be continuous. There's nothing wrong with having any possible fraction between say, you know, four ounces and five ounces. So that makes it continuous. In the last case, the number of times college freshmen have been sick the next day after drinking too, not, too much the night before. Well, um, if you're counting up how many times your buddy was uh, sick from drinking too much, um, that would certainly be a count, and I would say that data is discrete. However, if you were to measure the volume of vomit that the person threw up, um, that would be continuous, but that's a pretty disgusting thought.